We moved to the island a few weeks before I started second grade. I wasn't sure why Dad stayed in Seattle instead of coming with us, but I knew how I could find out. Eavesdrop when Mom was on the phone. According to what Mom told her friend Liz, Dad had been selling coke. But something had gone wrong and there were some bad guys after him. According to Dad, someone had stolen the coke. Mom said Dad and his loser buddies had lost it, right up their goddamn noses. <laughs> and she said there'd probably been some skanky little whores involved too. I didn't totally understand what all that meant. Mom told my little brother Josh and I that we'd moved to the island to start over so we could have a better life than the one we'd had with Dad. Josh was pretty mad about Dad not coming with us. He was too young to understand. Mom always screamed about how Dad ruined her life, but she screamed a little less when we moved to the island. She was always telling us how exhausted she was, though. Taking care of two little kids in a rundown trailer in the middle of nowhere was a big job. And mom had no money, no good work experience, and no education except a few months of modeling school that had ended when my dad knocked her up. Although mom yelled less with dad gone, she didn't stop. If we asked for something we'd seen on TV, like a light bright, or the newest Barbie doll, mom would lose it. What part of we have no money do you ungrateful little shits not understand? Mom screamed as she ripped the toys we were playing with right out of our hands and threw them across the living room or into the trash. Then our car broke down. Dad had always fixed it and mom didn't have any friends on the island, and we were out of milk. So we walked to the store, two and a half miles away. We were trudging back home when an old man pulled up alongside us in a dented up jalopy and offered us a ride. Mom was usually wary of situations like that, paranoid that anyone who tried to talk to us might be a serial killer but our trailer was at the top of a steep, winding hill, and the grocery bags were heavy, so Mom told us to get in the car. The old guy introduced himself as Ray Hall. I thought it was creepy the way Ray kept telling Mom how pretty she was. Mom was really pretty, though, and Ray was really, really old. So I decided maybe it wasn't that strange of a thing to say. Mom went to a party at Ray's house that night and came home with a stack of cash. Mom said Ray was going to buy all her food stamps from now on and give her cash for filling up his gas tank using Grandma and Grandpa's Chevron card. Once Ray gave Mom the idea, we were going up to Chevron almost every day to fill up somebody's car and take their cash. Pretty soon, we were going down to Ray's house most days. It was right on the beach, and it reminded me of an old boat that had crashed into the land but never made it back out to sea again. There were usually seven or eight kids there, and we always had to play outside, even when it was raining or too cold to be out there. Josh hated going to Ray's. He complained that he'd rather be at home playing Nintendo. I didn't like it much either, but Mom always seemed happy when she came outside to say it was time to go home, so I pretended I didn't mind. A year later, Mom still didn't have a job, and her new alcoholic loser boyfriend only worked every now and then. Even though mom always complained about us being poor, Josh and I always had clothes our friends wanted. Air Jordans, LA gear, guest jeans. Mom said she bought us expensive clothes because she didn't want us to be embarrassed at school. Josh said he'd rather have new GI Joes than clothes but I loved when my best friend was jealous of my outfits. 
I told Josh that mom was doing her best and that he should be thankful we didn't get teased like the kids who wore cheap stuff. On Father's Day, when I was nine, mom called dad to tell him we were going to stop by on our way to the mall. I've got my own shit to do today, mom said into the phone. But these kids want to see you, so your ass better be home when we get there. Josh and I had been working on Dad's Father's Day cards all week, and I was really excited to give him mine. When we got to Dad's house, though, he wasn't home. Josh told Mom to knock harder in case Dad was sleeping or in the bathroom. But Mom just tensed up and glared at the front door, her breath turning into a low, rumbling growl. Josh slipped his arm in front of Mom and started pounding on the door. He's not here! Mom grabbed Josh's wrist and flung his arm away from the door. He doesn't care about you, about us. He's a selfish son of a bitch. Then Mom stormed off towards the car, not looking back until the key was in the ignition. Josh and I dragged our feet. I hoped if we walked slowly enough, Dad's Mustang might come rumbling around the corner before Mom drove us away. When we got to the mall, Josh refused to get out of the car until Mom promised him a whole Cinnabon to himself. <laughs> Josh hated shopping, and he was mad at Mom for not letting us wait for Dad to get home. I forgot all about Dad once we were inside. Shopping with Mom was one of my favorite things. It was like playing dress up with a friend. Mom got so excited whenever I tried on something she liked. You have to get those, she said when I put on a pair of pink jeans. You'll be the cutest girl in school. When I showed Mom how expensive the pink jeans were, she swapped out the price tag with something she'd grabbed off the clearance rack. It's not stealing, because they can't prove we switch the tags. But never do this yourself. <laughs> Mom paid for my pink jeans and a few other things with cash. Then we went to her favorite store, Nordstrom. At other stores, we sometimes had to put things back after we'd been rung up if Mom realized she didn't have enough cash but we never had to do that at Nordstrom because mom was an authorized purchaser on grandma's Nordstrom card. After mom had charged three huge bags of new clothes to grandma's card, she noticed a seafoam green sweater on a display table. Ooh, isn't this cute? I knew mom would never wear that color. And I hated how she returned things every time we went to Nordstrom. I'm hungry, I said. Can we go to Cinnabon now? Then I grabbed Josh's hand and walked out into the mall. A few moments later, a security guard with a stubbly beard walked up to us and clasped his hand around Mom's arm. Please come with me, ma'am. I need to ask you a few questions. He led us to a small gray room underneath the mall. I spent the next 10 minutes squirming around on an uncomfortable chair, interrupting the mall cop to insist that mom hadn't meant to take the seafoam green sweater out of the store. Then a younger mall cop who looked bored took Josh and me out into a hallway. I kept protesting their unfair treatment of my mom while the uniformed guy watching us stared at the TV in the corner, nodding. Before letting us go, they told mom her name and photo had been put on a list of people who were banned from Nordstrom. She was kicked out for two years, and they said she'd be prosecuted if she entered Nordstrom during that time. When we left the mall, we drove back to dad's house. But once again, he wasn't home. Even though I was mad at dad for not being there, I still wanted him to have his Father's Day cards. As I crouched down to see if I could fit my card through the crack under the front door, Josh grabbed my arm and said, what if Dad steps on it? 
Before I could answer, Mom ripped the cards out of our hands and shoved them under the door. I've had enough of your dad's bullshit for one day. Mom stormed down the walkway towards the car. I could feel the tears burning as I let the torn off corner of my card fall from my hand onto the ground. Josh looked up at me and asked if I was okay. I told him it was dad's fault for not being home. Years later, when I was home from college for the summer, I caught mom smoking a joint out on the deck. I laughed when she tried to tell me it was a cigarette. She seemed relieved when I snatched the joint from her hand and said it was time for us to stop sneaking around, smoking weed on opposite ends of the house at the same time, <laughs> because it would be more fun to do it together. <laughs> One night, while mom and I were out on the deck, she started talking about that Father's Day she got kicked out of Nordstrom. The look on your face holding that damn Father's Day card. It was just too much. I picked up that sweater and walked out. I inhaled too much smoke and started coughing. Mom kept talking. I know it was crazy. I think I went a little crazy that day. I just thought if I got arrested, your dad would have to come get you. And then you could all have your nice Father's Day. I suddenly felt way too stoned. <laughs> like there was a rock stuck in my throat. I took a deep breath, hoping the fresh night air might help. Then I exhaled loudly and stared out at the water, avoiding mom's face. It wasn't really stealing. It was just a bad plan. <laughs> a really bad plan. When you and Josh left the room that day, I started bawling and fessed to the whole thing. In the decades since that Father's Day, Mom had done far crazier things than stealing. But there was something about that sweater, about that day. I'd been so sure it was an accident. And I'd hated those mall cops so much for stealing the fun I could have had with mom at Nordstrom during those two years. And so angry at dad for getting mom upset enough to make that kind of mistake. I wondered how many times I'd been so wrong. Josh had always said that mom's the crazy one, but I'd always blamed her boyfriends or even myself. About a week before mom confessed about the sweater, Josh had come home from a party saying he'd heard mom's old friend, Ray Hall, was the biggest Coke dealer on the island. I told him it was probably just a rumor. Josh laughed at me, said he couldn't believe someone as smart as me could be so stupid. For days, what Josh said about Ray had been scratching at me, transforming my memories and fucking with my head. But until mom confessed about that stupid sweater, I hadn't let myself admit that Josh was right and that maybe he'd been right all along. I needed a drink of water. I wanted to be by myself, but mom followed me into the kitchen you're not mad at me, are you? No, I said, forcing a half smile before I walked away. The next day, mom came home with a Nordstrom bag full of I'm sorry gifts. As I thanked her for the presents, I stifled the urge to ask how she paid for them. Then mom said, you know, I should have stolen from JC Penney instead. Those were the worst two years of my life when I couldn't go to Nordstrom. <laughs> I wanted to laugh with her. 
And I wanted to keep telling myself that every crazy thing mom ever did was for the right reasons. But something had changed. I'd been making excuses for mom ever since I was a little kid. But all of a sudden, I realized mom was full of shit. <laughs> and mom could not be trusted.